Hey guys, Mr. Kowalik here. Today we are going to have a presentation on blood spatter. This is the next part of the blood unit in forensics. So make sure you follow in your notes and buckle up. Here we go. Blood stains, blood spatter, however you say it, is a way for forensic scientists to analyze how blood coming from the human body or any body hits a surface and can give us really good information about what might have happened or what direction something had happened and can be very informative. Let's talk about some of the vocab. Blood stain pattern analysis is what BPA stands for. So we're going to see that come up from time to time. What can we learn from blood spatter? The type and velocity of a weapon being used can be determined by how blood hits a surface, possibly the number of blows that a blunt object made on a body can be determined by how the blood spatters against a surface, possibly the right hand or left handedness of an assailant can be determined position and movement of the victim and assailant during and after the attack can all be determined well can be help it can help in the determination of what happened which wounds might have been inflicted first the types of injuries how long ago the crime was committed or whether or not death was immediate or delayed those are all things that can help identify what might have happened it all call it all adds to the pool of evidence um, used in a case so how was blood evidence detected at a crime scene a lot of times blood is mistaken for other things it might look like dirt or in some cases a criminal might try to remove the blood from a crime scene but a good forensic scientist can find it by using some, some tools. First, uh, light sources. Those are the ones that you see on the crime scene investigation shows on all the different channels on TV and in movies. Uh, they're a little dramatized there, but um, it is still a way for a forensic scientist to find blood. And in the image over here, you see a flashlight and you see this filter. Um, and an investigator will first examine, examine the crime scene and look for areas that might contain blood. They may use high intensity light or UV light to help find traces of blood and other bodily fluids that are not visible under normal lighting conditions. So a lot of times you see them wearing orange goggles and using UV lights to pass over surfaces and it helps identify maybe where blood was in the past. Um, there is a blood reagent test that can be used, and these are two examples of them. Uh, these tests refer to presumptive tests are used to detect blood at crime scenes based on their properties of hemoglobin in the blood. Further, test to, further tests in the crime scene can determine if the blood is human or not. So these tests just tell us if there's hemoglobin in the blood. So it's testing for that. Um, there's a phenolphthalein test. It's a chemical that, util that is still utilized today and is usually referred to as the Castle-Meyer test. It produces a pink color when reacted with hemoglobin. And a hemostick is a strip that is coated with TMBs and can produce a green or blue color, which, which would, uh, again, show the presence of hemoglobin. And in the uh, inset picture over here, you can see um, the blood on this strip over here turned black, um, where in the control, they just dropped the, the fluid on without a presence of any kind of hemoglobin or blood, and it stayed yellow. So those are ways to detect if blood is on the surface by simply just dabbing it with a little strip. Sometimes it takes a little more. If we're looking for traces of blood that might have been cleaned or removed, 
a CSI agent might use something called luminol. Luminol is a spray, a reactive spray that is sprayed onto a surface where blood might be. And when light shines on it, it, it glows pretty brightly. And you can see this luminol reaction over here in the picture. It's very bright. Uh, there's a great um, Forensic Files episode called The House That Roared, which shows this being used a lot. There are two other ways, two other chemicals pretty much that are used in determining um, if blood was in an area. Uh, fluorescences are shined onto a surface or they're sprayed onto a surface that reacts with the blood. Typically, this is for older blood. And um, it's really similar to luminol. Uh, the UV light and goggles are used to detect, but as you can see, it shows a, a bright green color. And then leucocrystal violet or LCVs are a chemical process that are used for blood enhancement um, using... Using this helps to show if the blood is more uh, visible and can help for photography purposes, really. It makes the blood shine really bright and um, can be helpful for using to see, you know, where the blood was and which way something might have happened. So if blood is actually visible and it's identified to be from a victim or or an assailant how it hits the surface and what it does when it hits the surface is important um, in, in this case we're going to be looking at what's called blood stain pattern analysis that bpa so the first word we need to look at is spatter there's no l it's not splatter it's spatter blood stains created from an application of force to an area where blood originated and you can see the spatter mark down here it looks like a basic drip mark, but it's called spatter. Another term we're going to use is called the origin or the source is the place where the blood came from or originated. So that would be a wound or a gunshot or something like that. The angle of impact is important. The angle at which the blood hits the surface. Um, if there are multiple drops of blood, um, the spatter patterns can differ. And in a lab, we'll see how that happens. The original blood that um, is dropped, the first blood drop that hits the ground is called the parent drop. And from there, the satellite spatter marks can be produced. And as you can see here, there are these spines, I'll pull up that term here, spines that are protruding off the surface of this parent drop. So imagine that one drop hits, it makes just a circle pattern, and then another drop drops on top of that. It's like dropping into a pool, and the blood is ejected outwards, causing these spines. And in some cases, we have this satellite spatter mark where that blood hit the surface, another droplet hit, and launched um, a smaller droplet outwards. And that can help in identifying information as to maybe like maybe the victim was standing still while this happened because multiple droplets came out and hit the same spot. If we don't see any of these satellite spatters or spines, we can assume that maybe the person was moving while bleeding and there were no consecutive spatter marks. Some more terms we're going to look at passive blood stain. Um, that is going to be produced from gravity, blood series of droplets, flow patterns, blood pools are all terms that we're going to use when we see passive blood stains. Um, projected blood stains are ones that are forced outwards, where passive is just basically it rolling off a surface and hitting the ground. Projected is squirted out. I know it sounds gross. Um, there's a force of application and the blood is, is ejected and shot across, up, down, doesn't matter which way. Um, that can be a, a low, medium, or high impact. Um, sometimes they're called cast-offs. In some cases, if one of the arterial veins are, are um, cut,
cut, it can actually come shooting out of the person. Or if maybe an exploratory blood was was launched out of a, a nose, mouth, or wound, if, if there was an impact and, and blood was shot out, that's going to produce a much different looking blood stain than if it were just dripping down in a passive blood stain. The last one is called a contact or a transfer blood stain, where, for instance, in this image over here, you can see a shoe print left on the ground. It looks like a, a van or something like that. And the person who stepped in blood transferred the blood on the bottom of their shoe somewhere else, um, producing this blood mark, this blood stain. Um, it can come from a lot of different ways. Maybe uh, somebody touched blood on their hand and they touched the wall, leaving a bloody fingerprint behind, or their leg was was full of blood and they and they uh, came in contact with the wall and they left a pattern from their pants on the wall in blood. Um, that that would be a wipe pattern or a swipe pattern. But either way, it's transferring blood from one area to another. On the surface of something so um, what we would do at this point is a blood spatter lab which was really cool you would drip blood all over the place unfortunately we don't have that kind of lab experience here so I'm gonna share a video with you guys of a guy doing it. it's pretty cool in the next assignment so uh, thanks for watching make sure you fill out your notes and have a good day bye